Hey everybody, so the video that I'm going to be doing is showing you how dried flowers become really epic. And we're gonna go outside and see where they were last summer. And I asked her to come with me, but for some reason she has absolutely no desire to come with. So I think I'm gonna leave her here and we're gonna go outside and I'm gonna show you where the zinnias actually came from and then you'll see me talking a little bit more about it and the different processes that I used and what they look like when they come out. Everything from flattening them in a herbarium press to drying them upside down or in a vase, and letting them dry out that way, or using borax, which is a desiccant. And there's many different desiccants out there, including, guess what? Cat litter. Mm -hmm. So of course clean. Anyway, uh, thanks for chop dropping by and let's go outside and see what it's like. By the way, it's 30 degrees outside. There's absolutely nothing growing right now, but it is still pretty cool to look at because we have some giant foxtail growing and I do a no-till. So stay tuned. Let's get going. So take it, take a gander here. So this is a pretty flat field. And right now, I'm gonna turn the camera around. All you can see is a menagerie of like rye grasses and foxtail. Believe it or not, the foxtail is actually pretty, it's really pretty. If you can see this here, that turned into a wreath, absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, so I'll show you what this field looked like I'll show you a quick snip of the zinnias that I used the video. You see me talk later. Um, I filmed part of this at night and this is my daytime to show you what the field is now. We have behind us uh, upwards of almost 20 acres of land. It's really beautiful back there. There'll be other videos where I show you going back there and gathering some really neat things I love the mushrooms that I find and different lichen. It's pretty awesome. But anyway, I want to teach you today about something that people have ax uh, actually asked me about, which was how do you get dried flowers to look realistic? Uh, many times when I buy flowers, they would be pancaked in like they say pressed and the zinnias, for example, are three dimensional and you really if you want to use them in a wreath and keep that natural look, you cannot do that with pressing them between two books. It just doesn't work. If you flatten them in the books and put lots of bricks on top, it will work for a flat piece, like for a picture on a wall. But now when you want to put them into a beautiful wreath or do them on the iron that I show in the video later, it just doesn't look the same. They just look like pancakes. So I'm going to talk about that and you'll see me reveal in the other part of the video that I filmed at night, the other night and putting together with this one. But I just wanted to show you uh, where we grow it. And I wanna talk about this for just a second, kind of tilt it to the ground. So as you can see, it's not bare soil. We literally don't do that because if you take your soil um, from your garden from the year before and you dig it all up, you're uh, getting rid of all the roots that are anchoring and place all the nutrients in the soil. And when water comes and erosion happens, you're just wasting away all that good stuff that started to grow there. In the spring, you can till this under, uh, flatten it. Um, I, wouldn't, I don't wanna say till, because we try to do a no-till method, um, but just to kind of, give you a, a sense of what is okay to do. Years ago, people would take and completely get rid of every single bit. And you'll even see in cornfields now, people will be like, how come they left a little bit of corn stalk in the field? Well, that's actually really beneficial. And to do a cover crop over a plot of land that you're going to garden, like this one here, um, where it has all different types of grasses, inside of it 
it's a really great thing for the environment. It gives cover for little critters and creatures in the winter. And it also keeps your soil nutrients where you want it, in the ground. So uh, every time I teach or talk about a topic, I like to make sure that I'm talking about things that matter that have to do with gardening in a really sensible way. The Dust Bowl that happened many, many, many years ago happened to happen because people literally they made the land um, a desert right it became a desert the soil was no good anymore so please if you are gardening i recommend letting things grow up plant a cover cover crop and then the next year you'll actually be better off in the long run so anyway let's go back inside i'm going to tape a little bit more of showing you the different ways i've pressed things and a project actually two projects in the video that that came out pretty well in 3d uh, it's a cosmos a cupcake cosmos and xenia and you'll see i talk about it later in the video um and one more thing the cat litter method you saw my cat on the couch literally the cat litter method it works but i have tended to find some things they they dry better in the powdery substance like the borax and then it does in cat litter cat litter's thicker and i'd like to see people try different methods you're really trying to draw all the moisture out of your out of your blossoms that's literally what you're trying to do so anyway let's go back inside i'm getting cold it's 30 degrees and i don't have gloves on see you soon so she's still in the same spot can you say hi rose yeah she honestly could care less she sleeps all day they say cats sleep i think it's 18 hours a day Hi, Lori here from Found Flores Farm, and in this video that you're just about to see, I talk about these. So you'll see me actually taking them out of the desiccant. I used borax, and it really dries them in a lovely 3D way. Everything gets a little bit more muted or a little darker, but you'll see a project that I did where I took them and put them on an iron, and you'll also see a Cosmos that I had dried. It's a cupcake cosmos and I made actually a wall hanging with it. But you can just see in the video a little taste of that. If you go to my Facebook page, you can see the cosmos with a quote of its meaning on it. And you can also check out in this video the iron that I put these gorgeous babies on and see how beautiful they come out. And it looks phenomenal in front of an old antique door that I have. We live in a really old farmhouse and uh, so basically it's really great to use old pieces. So I talk about where we found the old iron and what I put these on in the video and if there is something you want to see done with flowers or dried with flowers um, or some sort of unique trick or tip that you want to explore that you're like wait how do I do that or will this flower work with a certain method please put something in the comments below. I'd also like to hear what you'd like to hear about in the comments below if there's something else you'd like me to talk about. And uh, please, again, follow me here. Follow me on social media of Facebook and Instagram and like, share, and um, definitely subscribe to all of my places that I am found at, uh, Found Flores Farm. And uh, let's get started. So keep on watching. to take these flowers out of the desiccant and we're doing it sort of live here air quote live um, but I wanted to show you some of what I do so I love the way it works when I dry it like this because the colors are really really vibrant and sometimes things come out really great uh, the 
colors sometimes get darker, they sometimes they get a little lighter, um, but here's another zinnia. This used to be like a lime green with a pink tint. The pink is still there. Lovely. This is a cupcake cosmo. I'm a little nervous about taking this one out. I'm not sure what's going to happen, but I'm going to try really hard to take it out without hurting it. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. It does look like a cupcake, doesn't it? We have a little bit of tear right there, but I know I can make something beautiful with that. Maybe a, a wall hanging. This is so beautiful. That one there, a little um, muted color, but we might add a little alcohol into that. That um, zhuzh, as I call it. Let's see what we got here. I actually forget exactly. There's another one of those beautiful lime and pink. Um, and it kept a little bit of the shade of the pink. And let's see what else is hiding. Oh, that's pretty. It's like a dusty rose. A little bit of raspberry, a little dusty rose. I wanted to show you the difference between air dry and borax. So using a desiccant of some kind. So I'm not saying to use borax is the only method. I'm just saying I used it and it worked. I happen to have it for other reasons, for cleaning. And so this one here, I did not tint this. So just to say again, I didn't tint it. This is the color. I know we have some petals gone, but that's from all of my recording and moving around and sticking it in my hair. Um, this here, these air dried and they dried really slow and they lost all color and they didn't hold their shape. You can't even really tell what they are. They're kind of like an Adams family sort of thing going on. It's, it's, yeah, not so nice. These down here, the color's great. They were dried in an herbarium press. You can find those on, um, you know, places like Amazon. I have an herbarium press where you press cardboard and you don't even have to have a fancy one. You could make your own with bricks, pieces of cardboard, wood, and just layer them all together. Uh, don't use, unless you don't mind the design, don't use paper towel that has designs on it. Use one that, use plain paper, but it must be absorbent. You don't want your flowers to sit and not be able to get that moisture wicked away from them. A cotton paper would work best. Herbarium paper is really great because of the, um, the purpose. It's made for this type of thing. And you will end up with moldy flowers if you use the wrong kind of paper. Trust me, I know. I've done it. And this right here was done in cat litter. My cat, shh, don't tell her. Um, yes, it's very clean cat litter. I kept it in the shed. And it was layered with the Black Eyed Susans from the garden. And they kept their color. This is not dyed, folks. This was literally put in there back in late summer. So, uh, look at that color. I didn't spray this. I haven't added anything to it. I didn't use any kind of preservative. There's another one of the zinnias that I paint. It's a pancake. It'll be great for St. Patty's time. But see, it's, it's like a hockey puck flower. A lot different than the three-dimensional look of this. And you're going to see a project that I did with an old iron that we dug up on the property and it has some of these zinnias on it. It's so beautiful. So I would much rather use this type of style than this any day. So stay tuned for my other part of the video. They're going to be linked together in the same video. So you can see me doing a little bit of reveal of the borax. And I talk a little bit more about what's happening. As you can see, this is the final product. They're beautiful. They're three-dimensional. The cosmos you see here, this is done in desiccant as well. It's three-dimensional and gorgeous. And here is the 
finished product of an iron we found in the ground that we donned with these beautiful three-dimensional zinnias. So please um, thank you for taking the time out to watch. I hope this inspired you. I ask, leave a comment below, like, share, and subscribe, and ring the bell so you get notification of next time. And again, I really appreciate your time.